Hey guys, so today I want to go over the Linux command line and do a basic introduction and teach you how to teach yourself new commands. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the directory structure. As we can see on the screen we have slash etc. This is the current directory that we are in. The way the Linux directory structure works is you have the root directory, it all starts at slash, and then let's say we're in etc slash bs slash home slash and that would basically mean we would be the root directory is the beginning then you have etc and inside etc is bs and then inside bs would be home and we would be in the home directory of bs that's inside etc so that's how the structure is the command line itself is called a shell this happens to be the bash shell, otherwise known as the born again shell. So if we want to know what a command is, we would then use the what is command. What is bash? And it tells us it's the GNU born again shell. To find out commands on our own, say we want to find our own command, say we don't want to read a tutorial, we just want to find the commands that relate to a topic, we would use the apropos command. A propose. This command will be very helpful for you. Use the apropos command and you'll be able to find a variety of commands related to the topic you're interested in. So let's say we want a propose and we want to find network related commands. A propose network will show us all of these different commands and services. So all of these different commands have their definition here. It'll tell you what the command is and the actual name of the command is on the left here we might want to know how to use it so we're going to use the man command which stands for manual pages for that command and to use the man command we're going to do man and then we'll do the command that we want to learn about so let's say we want to learn about T shark which is a network sniffer let's do T shark man T shark and what happens is it then prints out the manual for that command. You can use the man command to print out a manual for every command that has a manual. So we go down and we can press enter to slowly scroll down the manual. We can press the space key and this will go a full page down at a time when we use that. Then we can use the up arrow to read back up. We go to the top again and we see the basic format for how to use it. So if we wanted to use T-Shark and do some sniffing, we would do T-Shark and then if we wanted to specify the interface or the network card we would do dash i which would be the i flag you'll hear the term flag thrown around a lot anytime you have an extension with a letter here it will be known as a flag so this is the i flag and then that specifies the i stands for interface so the capture interface for us would be eth0 which would be our ethernet card. So if we wanted to capture on the ethernet card, we do T shark, I flag, and then ETH zero. So that's the basics of what the manual pages are. As I mentioned, it's the man command. So if we want to list what's in our current directory, where we are located at that moment, we would then type LS. LS will list all files and directories in there. File will identify the actual file type that we have in front of us. So say we want to see what the ntp.conf is. We type that and it tells us that it is text. It is not any specialized programming language. It is not a binary file. It is not a directory, but it is a text based file. So that tells us what's inside that file is text. The what is command. This can also help you learn about different commands. So say you want to find out what is the file command, the one we just went over. We would type what is as one word, and then we would type file. And then it tells you what that command is. Let's go to our home directory. Anytime you want to go to your home directory, you can do it represented in this way, as you see on the screen. From here, it takes us to our home directory. Let's say we want to know where we are at that moment. We can't tell where we are on the command line. Our location can be printed by typing PWD. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. And it looks like it's printed it out for us. So as you can see, it's slash home slash J Sorensen. That is where we're at right now. Now let's say we want to change our password. So let's type the change password command. That would be 
P-A-S-S-W-D. And when we type that, it's going to ask for our current one. And now it's going to ask for our new password. If you'll notice, unlike Windows, it does not echo the stars for your password. This is to protect you from someone capturing the amount of characters you're typing if they're, say, looking over your shoulder. So now we're going to type our new password. And we have to type it twice. And once we've done that, it'll tell you password was updated successfully. Let's say we want to see who else is logged in on the system. We'll type the who command. It'll tell us who's logged in. So we can see there is JS and J Sorensen. They were both logged in. Now so let's say we want to know what they are doing. So we would then just type W. W will tell us who's logged in and what they're doing. So we can see that JS is in a Mate session here. We can see Jay Sorensen is running the W command to find out who's logged in and what they're doing. To create a new file, an empty file that may be needed to be created for a script or something else, we would use the touch command. Touch, hi, and we'll create a file called hi. We can simply use the ls or the list command and find out if our file was created successfully. There it is. The high file is right there in our home directory. Let's say we want to edit the high file. We'll go back into nano, hi, and we'll open it. And now we'll type some text. Okay, and now to save, once again, we're going to hold down Control O, and then we will press Enter. Now to exit again, Control X, and we will exit. Next, if we want to see the date, we can type the date command. It'll tell us the time and the date at that moment. Now let's say we want to see a calendar. We could use the cal command, C-A-L. It will show us the current calendar. To say you want to know how many lines are in a file, WC and then the high file will tell us the different numbers here. It will tell us that it is one line, it is five words, and 23 characters. That is how we do that. Now if we just say want to find out how many characters alone, we could then do WC cares and then we would type hi and we would get 23 as the total number of characters. Now let's say we want to go and remove that hi file or any other file we need to remove. Let's first move it around. I want to show you guys how to move it. Say we want to copy it. First thing we're going to do is CP, then the file we want to copy, and then another name for the copy. We will name it hi.bak for backup. Then we've copied hi and made a copy of it as hi.bak. So if we type ls-a, it will list all files, including hidden files. In the Linux structure, we have dot files, which are generally configuration files of different types. And when we do the a flag, dash a, we will see all the hidden files as well as the non-hidden files. Some of these files you may not want to list all times. Now let's say we want to list and give us a little more information. We could do the L flag and that will list it. It will also list the ownership. In the Linux system, the ownership will be done by user and group, something I'll go over in a later video. Say we want to see how much free memory is available in our system at that moment. We would type free, okay, and it shows us the used, the total, and the free. What is running on our system? We could use a variety of commands to find out what is running on our system, but we want to first, we want to clear off our space. We would use the clear command. That will give us a fresh start. Type ps to see what is running. We could do ps and then add a couple flags at a time. So here we have every command that is running, and we have all of the different parts to it, how much memory and CPU it's using, the process ID, each command that is run will have a different process ID, how will we stop a command? Let's say something is crashing our system and we want to get rid of that. We could then kill that command. We could kill it by its process ID or we could kill it by kill all. Say we want to move hi.back into the temporary files directory. We would do mv hi.back and then slash temp. Let's find out where something exists on the system. Let's say we want to know where the ls command exists. It would tell us it exists in slash user slash bin slash ls. Like the video, subscribe, and share, and I'll be back later with more on Linux.